So it's actually pretty simple to carve jack-o'-lanterns in Blender using the uh, lasso trim tool in sculpt mode. But I also want to show you how to make this pumpkin. So if you just want to carve it, download the file in the description and skip to the second chapter. Otherwise, follow along and we will begin. I'm going to delete everything and use Shift A to add a UV sphere. So what we're going to start with. And I'm going to go to edit mode, look at it at pop, switch to face selection. And with alt select, by clicking in the middle here, not there, that'll select there, but selecting here, and then hold shift and alt, we can select, oh, sometimes you have to find the right spot. We're going to select, uh, for me, I'm going to say every third. We're going to be selecting... However you want to do your pumpkin, we're going to be selecting the areas that we're going to sort of pull inward to make the divots. And we're going to make these areas smaller, as small as you want, with the I button. If you go a little bit too far and it starts looking weird like that, that's fine. You can click to apply, go to vertex, smooth vertices until it looks uh, a little better. And then I'm going to press E and click to apply. And I'm going to press S to scale it down a little bit. Just a little is all you need. If you want to get an extreme pumpkin, you can do so. You can also select all these and scale them out or whatever you want to do. But it doesn't really look pumpkin-y yet. Let's see what we can do about that. First of all, we can right-click and shade smooth. That helps a little bit, but it looks more like a melon. So if you... Go to Vertex Select in Edit Mode. You click the top vertices, and then hold Shift while clicking the very bottom vertices. And I'm going to turn on Proportional Editing, which moves everything around the selection as well. And I'm going to press Scale with S, and I'm going to press Z to scale only on the Z axis, which is up and down. You can see it's already getting pretty pumpkin-y. You can scroll the scroll wheel up and down to select more or less and get sort of the pumpkin effect you want. This looks good to me. I'm going to just do one more thing. Select all with A. And I'm going to smooth vertices again. Uh, you, can, you can smooth it more or less if you want. Uh, just to get the pumpkin you want. Could be tall or short. You could scale the whole thing with S and Z. Make exactly the pumpkin you want. But anyway, let's go on to the technical detail of having an inside of the pumpkin. That's uh, necessary for us to carve to the inside or Blender is going to get really confused. So to give something an inside, just so you know, I can scroll inside of it and Blender doesn't even recognize this. I, if I just show you by setting back face culling on, Blender only really sees it as having one side. So if I add a solidify modifier under the modifiers tab, which is a little wrench, it now has an inside according to Blender. And you can see it in wireframe mode. There's sort of overlapping lines. If you turn up the thickness, which we should, you can see that the inside is moving around. And we want, that's a good, from what I was testing, this is a good amount, but uh, however thick you want yours. And it's gonna look a little glitchy the way it's going inside itself. But again, we can fix that with a smooth. So first we have to apply it. And now if we go into edit mode tab, Select nothing with Alt-A, and then if you press L while pointing at a vertice, it'll select everything connected to that vertice. Uh, so try and aim at the inside. I missed. If you click enough times, you'll get it. Uh, so there I got the inside. So I'm just selecting the inside, and now when I go to Vertex, Smooth Vertices, it'll only smooth the inside. And you probably want the inside to be pretty smooth. Uh, it's not as bumpy like the outside of a pumpkin. I don't think, anyway. I'm not a pumpkinologist. 
But anyway, this should work for our needs. So if I go back, uh, let's look at this. We need a pumpkin stem. We can add that now that we added an inside. So I'm going to switch back with the three key to the face selection. And let's see. I like the way this turned out with these little stars here. Because I could select these and get a bit of a, a texture to the uh, outside of the stem, if you see. You can make whatever kind of stem you want, but I'm going to scale this down a little. Whoops. I want to turn off proportion letting, so we're just editing this. And make sure that's not selected. If you hit sh hold shift L while pointing at something, you can deselect everything connected to it. Okay. Here we go. We only have the selected. And shrink it down a little. And press E to extrude. And then press E to extrude again. Sort of bend it whichever way. Shrink it however you want. R to rotate. S to scale. And make whatever kind of stem you want. It could be simple or small or whatever. But now I'm going to go to edge select mode. And I'm going to use the alt left click again to select the whole loop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to smooth this out a little bit with bevel. So that's control B. You can also use the scroll wheel to add more or less. I think I think this is a good amount of curving just to sort of keep the detail level similar to the rest um, of the model. But it's up to you. You could also, if you have a pretty good computer, you could add a subdivision surface. But given what we're going to be doing later on, you might want to stick to this detail level. It's probably fine. Anyway, we can, we can do the same thing on the bottom. Press C to select in a circle. Uh, I'm going to undo that and just use the I key to inset this. It looks a little messed up. No smooth vertices. Okay, there's the little bottom of the pumpkin thing. There's the top. Now let's add some color. Since we're going to be carving into it, I don't want to use a, a texture texture. So I'm going to go to vertex paint mode. Paint the whole thing orange. You can press F to scale the brush. And you'll notice that you're only painting on one side. So that's a problem. So if I want to paint the whole thing orange, one thing you can do is paint set vertex colors. That'll set it all orange. The other thing you can do is set the brush to turn off front faces only, set fallout to projected. And now, if I want to paint the stem on to say the top and bottom at the same time, I'm going to press 7 on the numpad. Or you can press this thing up here. Scale this down a little. I'm going to paint that green. And you'll see I painted all the way through to the bottom. So you can use that to paint it too. And what else I'm going to do is go into edit mode. Because I can actually press this L to select uh, the outside and press H to hide it. So now I'm just looking at the inside. If we go into vertex paint, we can actually paint just the inside. And what I'm going to do with that is uh, I'm going to make it sort of an inside color. Sort of a yellowish. So when we cut into it, we can see that the it, there's inside and outside and all that. Okay. And so that there's no stem on the inside. So if we go back to object mode, you can press Alt-H in edit mode to unhide things. There's no color because it only shows up in vertex paint mode unless we set the material to use the vertex paint texture. So I create a new material. The base color is white. That's why it's showing as white. So if I set, I use the circle to set it to color tribute, which is another word for vertex colors. And we look at it in material preview view. Bam, there's all the colors. So that way we can sculpt and see the colors at the same time. That's good. 
It's interesting the way there's a little discolored. That can be fun. Um, one other thing we can do with uh, Vertex Paint, it has this nice feature. It, it's not that uh, well made of a, a feature, and it's not going to export to everything, but you can always bake to a texture later on. But we can use the dirty vertex colors. And you can mess mess with the settings a little and looks a lot more like a pumpkin now. That basically just like makes it darker in the ridges, the actual geometric ridges of the object. Okay. So I'm happy with this pumpkin now. Uh is it ready for carving? We just have to set the settings uh in sculpt mode. So first thing I'm going to say is make sure to save at this point because it tends to crash a lot. Uh, so I'm going to save as a uh, pumpkin. I'm going to call it pumpkin4 because I have a bunch of pumpkin files, honestly. Anyway, um, we're going to go into sculpt mode so that we can actually set up the carving itself. You might want to look at it from the front with a one key, or you can just press this green thing, just in case uh, we want the face in the front. You can still move around and look at it. Uh, you can also press the period key to focus on it. And we just want to make sure in object mode that the cursor is at the center of the pumpkin. If it's not, you can go into edit mode, select all with A, press shift S, cursor to select it. A very important step. So going back into sculpt mode, let's look down this huge list. Down where there's a bunch of boxes, there's something called the lasso trim. You might have to hold down this and switch to lasso trim instead of box trim, unless you want to cut boxes. But anyway, um, now we're almost ready to cut, but if you cut, you see it cuts through to the other side. Uh, so if we undo that, Click Use Cursor for Depth. There we go. We're ready. We can carve, except you might want to set this to project. I had slightly better results when I set this to service and that to pr project. But uh, anyway, we're ready to carve this thing now. So you click and you drag with this tool. And if you're just starting from the file, it should just work as you've seen and it cuts a hole something to note if you zoom in a lot it tends to not cut all the way through and um, if you cut from far away for some reason it tends to work so I'm going to undo those cuts and show you that you can carve pretty much anything Another little note, if you do this, like cut into itself, it doesn't always work. Sometimes it works, that works. But if you get too messy, it can mess up or even crash. So, you know, basic shapes. See what works. If it doesn't work, try it again. And there you go. You can make pretty much anything. Uh, one other feature to note, you can actually start over as many times as you want, but you can actually use this mesh symmetry option just by clicking that X up there. Now you see there's two cursors. When I do an eye on this side, <laughs> whoops, like I said, it's, it's glitchy, but it'll work usually. There's an eye on both sides. Sometimes it'll even work. Like that, you can do a nose, be perfectly symmetrical, but honestly, I just like cutting it like this. And once you're done, you can go into object mode and right click and shade auto smooth. And there you go, there you have it. There's your pumpkin. I hope you enjoyed.